Hi, Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising. August, busy, busy, busy. And this is a good time to start thinking about not only your stories, but your letters. Those missives that are going to be going out this fall, your appeal letters, your emails, your thank yous. How are they going to look? And how is your donor going to receive them? Well, I had a very interesting experience in the last couple of weeks with getting appeal letters. And I, I'm getting quite a few. I, I don't know whether you've done a, a summer letter, but I've gotten quite a few. I got two letters from one organization that elicited the exact opposite response from me. And I wanted to share that with you because I think that it's a perfect opportunity when you start getting your materials together and your stories and your content, sit down in a group and troubleshoot in a way. How, how would you react to this letter? If, if you were a particular person that had this particular situation, would this letter, would this appeal resonate to you? Get input, gather input, because you don't want your appeal letter to go out to a particular segment and that segment is absolutely turned off by your appeal. Okay, so now I'm going to give you my example of what happened. And the letters were segmented because they knew that I had personal experience. I lost a son to ALS. So they knew that I had a personal experience with ALS. It was personalized, dear Joy. Now, one appeal told this beautiful story, and it was, it was a touching story about a young family and the father got ALS and what they faced and, and how they, they gathered uh, around him and with the help of the ALS organization and neighbors and family and support groups, how, how well they were de and how courageously and thoughtfully they were dealing with, with, with this really difficult, difficult situation. And I immediately wanted to donate. I immediately wanted to help this family. Now, about two or three days later, I get a different ALS appeal. And I wish now I'd saved it, but I reacted so quickly, tossing it out, I didn't. And so I opened up the letter and it said, Dear Joy, it starts with just a tingle in the fingers. It starts with just a twitch in the arm. And you want to know something? I stopped reading. It, it, it honestly terrified me. It took me back to the terrifying moments when my son first got the disease. And I didn't want to continue with this letter. And I didn't. And so I thought to myself, I want to present to you, and, and maybe it's me, and it probably is. <laughs> I, I'm a little weird. But here I got two letters from the same organization that I support. One letter made me want to give. The second letter absolutely just creeped me out, to be really truthful. So when you sit down and write those letters, I thought, what a perfect time to share with you it, you've got the time now, you, you've got your group, you've, you've got your people that give you great feedback and, and tell them, Here, here's the story and here's the different segments that we're going out to and here's the different ways we've tweaked this appeal. If you were in their shoes, how would you react? How would you feel about this appeal? Would it make you want to give or would it make you want to throw the letter out. Okay, so now let's go on to a group that I love. And, and if you've watched me the last couple of years and you have seen some of the YouTube videos, Oregon Humane Society is, I, I think, so primo. Everything they do is absolutely wonderful. And so I've gotten a couple of letters from them this month. And they always, they always have such a beautiful story and such great images. And here's the appeal letter, number one. Oregon Humane Society to Joy. Dear Joy, born too small, tiny Acadia 
has a huge will to live. Boy, already I'm ready to support Acadia. I love that. I have now a huge will to help him live. His mother, astray from a local county shelter, arrived at the Oregon Humane Society just in time to give birth to six adorable kittens. And Acadia was the tiniest and the most fragile of the litter. Too weak to nurse, he needed the care and attention provided by a loving foster home. Well, all of a sudden you're really caught up in this, aren't you? You can just picture, you can just picture this tiny little kitten that's too weak to nurse. An Oregon Humane Society has him in a wonderful, loving foster home, helping him eat and stay alive. The letter goes on to say, thankfully, donors like you help to fund the OHS foster program providing volunteers with medication, supplies, and around-the-clock support from their vet stay. Please give today and help fund life-saving care for pets like Acadia. At this point, you're really impressed. You know that they OHS has gone the extra mile. They've got foster care. They are really giving Acadia life-saving care, and that takes a lot and you want to help too. When volunteer Michelle, the letter says, saw the opportunity to foster the exhausted mama cat and her six kittens, she jumped at the chance to help this family of felines. She says, Acadia became so sick. He struggled to breathe. He couldn't smell. His eyes were clogged and he refused to nurse. He needed multiple medications to treat his infections. All of a sudden, don't you just feel that if Acadia had been anywhere else without all this help and attention and loving care, he just absolutely wouldn't have had a chance. And then Michelle says she remembers, quote, I rushed him to OHS one Sunday evening Outpatient services showed me how to tube feed him, which he needed every two to three hours for over two weeks. Seeing him grow kept me going. Isn't that wonderful? So now all of a sudden you're thinking about these wonderful volunteers that are doing all this great work at OHS. And the letter says, thanks to donor support and Michelle's devotion to this pint-sized kitten and his family, Acadia grew stronger every day. After he gained enough weight, he came back to OHS to get ready for adoption. All right, let's take a look now at the, the back page here, the second page. It goes on to say that every shelter pet needs to be vaccinated and spayed or neutered before adoption. And you're starting to get a real picture of everything that OHS is doing for these animals. And these services, the letter says, are vital to animal health and welfare. And since OHS operates without the benefit of tax dollars or affiliation with any national organization, Community support provides the resources for this basic life-saving life -saving care. So right now, you see how independent OHS is. They're not getting tax dollars, and they're not getting any money from these national organizations that you see on television pleading for your support that probably many of you think that that support trickles down to humane societies like OHS, but no, it, it isn't and didn't in this case. So the letter says, it only took a day before Acadia's Forever family brought him home where he plays and lounges with his best buddy, Yoda, the Corgi. Even the donors never saw how this tiny kitten could fit in the palm of your hand. He survived thanks to your generosity and compassion for the pets at OHS. And now the ask. 
the letter says, please donate today and be our partner in the works to provide care for every pet in need. Together, we can provide them with the healing medical care and forever homes, gifts that enrich the lives of pets and people who love them. Then they have the PS. We've talked many times how important that PS is. PS, adoptions fees only cover about 20% of the costs associated with shelter operations, medical care, behavior assessment, and adoption services. See how smart they are? They're telling you, they're reminding you of every single thing that they are doing to keep these animals safe. But the rest, the letter says, comes from animal lovers like you. It asks again, please donate today and be our partner in providing those services to more than 11,000 pets each year. And this is very cool the way they do this because you know if you're going to write a great appeal, tell a great story with emotion, don't pack it with a lot of data and statistics. But here they're telling you, they're backing up how much you can help by being a provider, being a partner, because you're going to be providing these services to more than 11,000 pets each year. Now, let's take a look then at the remit form. Okay, I'm going to grab it here because I think their remit forms are really excellent. This particular, I can tell this particular remit form was from my lower don donations. The, the higher ones ask me for some more money. But here, this one says, is enclosed, is my life-saving gift for the animals. It starts with $50, and it tells you exactly what that gift level will do. In this instance, it's going to feed four pets in the shelter for a week. One thing that I think that they always do that's so interesting is they always give you the opportunity you see there on the right hand side, lower right. I would like to become a pause supporter with my recurring gift so much a month. And they give you the opportunity right there. They also, on the other side of the remit uh, card, which I'm sure you'll see uh, up on the screen now, more ways to help pets. So they, they give you the opportunity for an employer's matching gift form. They give you an opportunity to ask for a packet, Friends Forever, so they can include my pets and OHS in my will. This is one I really like that they do. They say, I've already included OHS in my estate plan, but have not notified you. Don't you think that's really cool? As a development director, I think that this is such a terrific thing to insert, to give people the opportunity to let you know, yeah, you are in my will. Because if you only find out afterwards, after their death, it, it, you just feel so uh, not only uh, sad that they died, but so depressed that you couldn't have reached out to them and, and thank them so much for, for such wonderful loyalty and support. And then lastly, it says, I'm interested in donating my vehicle. Please contact me, which I'm sure a lot of you already do. And then this is really important. If you need assistance, it gives you a person's name and a phone number that if there's anything about this that is confusing you've got someone to reach out to a human being a real connection so i think that everything about this remit form is is absolutely perfect front and back you know it's got their address their telephone number their website you got it Okay, let's look at the envelope that this appeal came in because it is exemplary also. It's absolutely stellar. Of course, it has Acadia's picture on the front. And it says, you can provide health and happiness for pets like Acadia. Your donation helps build a more humane society. 
Well, immediately when I get an envelope from Oregon Humane Society and the picture of the pet is on there, I can hardly wait. I can hardly wait to find out what the story is. What's happened to this pet? How come they're on the cover? Am I going to be able to help them? What's their situation? And then let's look at the back of the envelope. Join us. And they're talking about partnerships. They did that in appeal. They're talking about it again here in the envelope. Join us in creating a more humane society. Isn't that wonderful? Imagine a place where kindness and love prevail. A society in which all beings have a place, a purpose, and a sense of belonging. Makes you just feel like you definitely want to be a part of this group and accomplish, accomplish those beautiful things, doesn't it? And then of course you've got their website, you can take the pledge, hashtag be more humane. This is perfect. I mean, if you need a great example to help you set up a beautiful appeal letter and to take in every single best practice that there is and from such a successful organization, there it is, all right? Okay, I wanted to also show you their, their monthly commitment. Yeah, it's up there on the screen. Let's talk about it for a minute. Make a monthly commitment to animals. Join Oregon Humane Society as a monthly supporter. Listen, all of the giving statistics last year from 2018 that they gathered showed one important factor that monthly giving is really becoming the king, the queen. It is the way to go. You really, and they, and they stay longer, the retention rate is longer, they, they give more, you develop more of a relationship, loyalty. Your monthly giving program needs to be high on your priority list. Let's, look, let's go back and look at this again. It says, ongoing monthly gifts through the planned account withdrawal system. They call it PAUSE. So they've given their monthly giving program a name. I like this. I really like this because it really tells uh, what it's doing. And it says it's a convenient way. And, and, and monthly giving is all about convenience, really, for both of you. It's a convenient way for you to support OHS throughout the year. And of course, it has a cute picture of a dog. It also has a contact us, it gives you a phone number, and then of course it gives you a website. And you go straight to their monthly giving program pause information. They give you that particular landing page. So if monthly giving, if you've decided to make a monthly commitment, you know exactly who to call, exactly where to go, exactly what the program is called, there's no confusion. And when you go to that landing page, you'll see that there's no confusion there either. All right, now on the back side of that same ma mailer that they put inside their appeal letters, by the way, and, and their thank you, it says, everything is better than twos. And it says, double your gift for free. Matching gifts are an easy way to double, sometimes even triple, your charitable contribution to OHS. Simply ask your employer for a matching gift application and send it with your donation. This makes such a difference. And I know uh, last year we were working on a, uh, it was, this was a personal uh, fundraiser, fundraising effort to fund a, a study for uh, West Highland White Terriers. And some of the companies uh, of the donors, were go they were more than matching. It was one and a half times the gift. So this is particularly wonderful to remind your peeps that employers do have matching gift programs and it makes a huge difference. All right, let's look at a thank you that I got from OHS and see what you think about this because of course you know that I think everything they do is pretty darn good. 
So at the very top of the letter, you'll see it up there on the screen, it says, thank you for helping pets in need. Below, it gives my gift from uh, May. And so I know exactly the date and the amount and how long I've been a supporter. This is in one account. I think I told you I have two separate accounts there for some reason. So it says, Dear Joy, again, there is a story. And this is Nova. Now, this particular gift that they're talking about, I made a gift for a, a, a friend's cat in, in Portland, Oregon that had died in honor of that. So I suspect if it had been for a friend's dog, I would have probably gotten a letter about a little dog. But nevertheless, this was for, for a, uh, a cat. And so my thank you reflects that particular interest. And it says, Dear Joy, Nova, a brown tabby, was in a happy home with an owner who cared for her. But when her owner had to move out of the country for work, Nova found herself alone in a big scary world. Because of donors like you, the Oregon Humane Society was there to take Nova in, providing food, shelter, care, and love when she needed it most. Now they tell you, they get more specific about what they did. She was spayed, vaccinated, and microchipped to get ready for her new home. So they're telling you exactly all the wonderful things that they do for these animals. But it's still all about Nova in her story. Four days, it says, was all it took for this adorable kitty to find her forever home. Four days, that's terrific. Generous animal lovers like you fund programs that save animal lives ensuring that every pet gets medical care and a second chance at happiness. And then it's signed by their annual giving man, a, a manager. And of course, they remember the PS, says, PS, turn your unwanted vehicle into pet food. Hey, there's a good idea. Got that old car sitting out there. You can turn that car into pet food. Autos for Animals is a great way to help pets get the care that transforms their lives. And it tells you where to go and it has a particular landing page. You see that OregonHumane.org slash autos to get started. So you know that with the way they do things, that landing page, you're going to know exactly why you're there, you're interested in turning your auto into pet food, and you're, not, you're going to get to the right place immediately. When you turn this thank you letter over, it gets really interesting. It's, it talks about their mission, and it gives you pie charts. It shows you what they're doing. Your support saves lives. Our goal is to create a community where every life is respected and where animal suffering is a thing of the past. And that's a quote by a Sharon Harmon, who is president and CEO. And then you look at your donation dollars at work. Look at that. They give you expenses, very transparent about that. Their expenses. And then they show you where their revenue will be coming from in 2019. 18% are from your bequests and plan gifts. 26% from program revenue, and 56% from donations and fundraising. So you absolutely know how important you are to their budget process. Very, very. And now look, saving lives, creating families. Look at all these beautiful testimonials. How wonderful. You can, you, you can just get a sense of how happy people are with the pets they've adopted. Emma, Lou is affectionate and purrs all the time. She's doing great. We see her getting braver every day. It, it, it's, it's really so perfect. And I suspect, again, like I say, that, a lot, that this is a lot of cats are referred to in this letter because I donated for, uh, for in memory of, of my friend's cat. 
Now it talks about trust and look at the bottom of the letter. You see that it's an accredited charity and you see GuideStar and it says we're a nonprofit you can trust. The Oregon Humane Society is a community supported nonprofit animal shelter and receives it reminds the donor once again that they don't receive any tax dollars or government support. Your contribution is tax deductible to the extent provided by the law. You remind your donors of that. It is tax deductible. And trust news here. Your Oregon Humane Society does not sell or otherwise make available donor information to businesses and other charities. And then they remind you down at the bottom, it's printed on post consumer recycled paper. I think these two communications are the best of the best. And I think that they, you can glean all kinds of really great ideas on how to present yourself to your donors in your appeal letters and you thank you letters. Hey, this is Joy Olson at Blockbuster Fundraising saying I hope you're keeping cool this August and we hope that we're giving you ideas that are going to get you all excited about fall fundraising. Find out more information about us and about uh, our fundraising video blogs at blockbusterfundraising.com and joyolsongroup.com. We have a Blockbuster Fundraising YouTube channel, very active. We have over 300 free fundraising video tips for you. We're loving our IGTV channel on Instagram. Catch us there. And you know, you can catch us every week. We go live Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Hope you're, hope you're inspired. Bye -bye.